Well, hello, good people. Today, I wanted to go over regional guidance. What is it used for? How do you use it? And we'll also talk a little bit about using control layers. But before we get started, I wanted to thank our friends over at Invoke AI for giving me access to their hosted site. Now, if you're a serious artist looking to use AI as part of your workflow, this is a great option if you don't have the system to run locally. As always, I'll leave details in the description below. Now to start off, I want to give you a really simple example that happens often, especially with SDXL models, even Flux, but Flux is a little bit better in this regard. Now, if we look at the prompt, it's really simple. It's just a digital illustration of Superman, Batman drinking a beer in a rustic restaurant, right? I am using one of their concept templates here. So here's the full prompt. And if we look at this image, it does a pretty decent job. It's not perfect. We have an extra beer here, unless Batman is super thirsty and he really wants a party. But we also see some bleeding into the background. We have the Batman logo here at the back in here as well. But what often happens when you have two main subjects within your prompt, you get a lot of these hybrid results where the prompt will bleed into both subjects. So we have what's supposed to be Batman here with the Superman logo, but we have Superman here with Batman's mask, right? And sometimes you'll get the twin syndrome where you'll get two of the same character. And when it goes really bad, you start to see some weird things happen with the results here, right? Now there's several reasons why why this happens, but basically it comes down to the way the model's trained, the architecture behind it. We don't have to get into that, but this is where regional guidance will help. So what we're going to do is close the viewer here. We're going to click on this plus button to add a layer. And this is where you're going to find all your control options. You see, we have global reference image, in paint mask, regional guidance, regional reference image, control layer, which is control net, which we'll touch base on later and raster layer. Eventually in future videos, we'll go through all of these, but for now, I want to just show you regional guidance. When we select regional guidance, you see that it's going to create a layer. And for those of you that are new to layers, just think of layers as like a layer cake. You have a bottom layer, middle layer, top layer, depending on how many layers you want. So everything you do is stackable. You could put things on top of each other. And as of now, the way it works, order doesn't matter. Okay, now you have three options here, prompt, negative prompt, and reference image. We're gonna use prompt. And in the first one, we're going to put Superman. If you wanted to change the color, you can do it up here. And then we're gonna add another regional guidance layer. And for the prompt, we'll just simply put Batman. Now, when it comes to the prompting, you do want to keep it rather simple. You can use a few words, but you're not putting your whole prompt in here. And you want to make sure you're using the brush tool. So I'm going to hit B or you can select it from the options here. And to increase the size, you can hold control and scroll up or down. And you can actually control how that works here. If you go up to the gear button, you can select invert scroll for brush size if you want. So if I click that, if I scroll up and hold control, it makes it bigger. If I scroll down, it makes it smaller. I personally like that better. It's really up to you what you want to do. So the way this works is we're going to brush an area where we want Batman to show up. And we're going to do the same for Superman and just roughly do an area here. Now, let me be clear. What we're doing here technically is a mask, but it's not actually like an in-paint mask. What regional guidance is, is more of a push or a nudge to the prompt saying, okay, I want Superman somewhere in this area. I want Batman in this area. It's not a foolproof method, but it's another way to condition the image you want. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a few images here. So we see in this example, it worked pretty well, except for all the extra beer glasses. But as I said, it's not perfect. It's still prone to do the same thing. And in this shot, although it followed the guidance, we do have this character that almost looks like Superman as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we get the same thing happening here. But we see two of the four images that we generated followed the prompt the way we wanted. Now, what we can do is add plus signs to weight the importance of the subjects. And we can also steer the guidance even more by adding, let's try another regional guidance and we'll put in a negative prompt here and we'll put Batman, Superman, add some weight there if we wanted to. Let's just move this image aside for now. 
And by the way, if you just want to work on the canvas, if you hit F, F is the shortcut key to close both panels. Or if you want to close the left or right one, the gallery is G for gallery. And the left panel is shortcut key T. Personally, I work on a 34 inch widescreen, so I love the big canvas. Anyway, going back to the negative prompt here, we're going to fill in the other areas where we don't want Batman and Superman to show up. You don't have to be super accurate. These are just rough areas, okay? Generate again. Control Enter is your shortcut key to generate. I did quite a few generations here, seven images. The first one was in successful. You look at the second one. This one turned out pretty good. Here's a third one. We see more success. We no longer see Batman or Superman showing up in the background. So the negative prompt will work pretty well here. The rest of these, we were getting the outcome that we originally wanted, right? Now, another way we can use it is utilizing control net at the same time. So I have this asset image here, and we're going to use it as a basis to create this next image. There's a few ways where you can upload your assets. You can do it directly if you are under your image tag. Tab, just go to assets and then you can upload your image from here or if you know that you're going to use control net just head over to layers click on the plus button here and then we're going to click on control layer and then here you'll find an icon to upload your image i'm just going to drag it into this area new control layer so the easiest way to do that now my image size is 832 by 1152 but my asset image is only 640 by 832 or something like that so the way we can fit this in quickly is if we right click over the image go into transform under fit mode we're going to select fill and just select fit to box hit apply and there you go and now everything fits into my generation box now for this example i'm using sdxl models and control net now for the control net models if you're running this locally you can just go to your model manager here and under starter models you could just click on this and it's going to install everything from the models to control nets to get you started but if you want to install them separately you can just filter through the menu here you see i've got ip adapter installed already and then if we scroll further down you'll see there are some for canny depth soft edge so on and so forth but the one i'm using right now is going to be the union sdxl one and this is an all-purpose one where there are 12 control nets plus five advanced editing ones now if you want to download this manually you just go into files and download the Pro Max version. It's a pretty big file at 2.5 gigabytes, but the Pro Max version is the latest one. Or you could just click this to copy it. And then within your model manager, you can go into Hugging Face and paste that in there. And then when you click install repo, it's going to automatically download it. Now you can do this with any of the other models. If there are multiple files in there, it'll ask you to choose which one. Coming back to our layers in Canvas, we want to select the drop down here. I'm going to select the Union Control Net. And I'm going to set my weight to about 0.7. And the begin and end, we're going to do 70%. Now the weight applies to the actual model that we're going to use. So I'm going to use depth for this example. So it's going to apply 70% of the depth. And then the begin to end step is the actual generation. So it's going to use the control net 70% of the way. And then 30% is going to allow it some creative freedom. Now we do have to apply what's called a preprocessor. So if we click on this star here under filter type, this is where we can apply the preprocessor. So as I said, we're going to use depth anything and the model size you could choose between small base or large small is good enough so i'm going to select that and then we're going to hit apply and now you see the image has the depth control map on it and if you're new to control net the way depth works it looks at the foreground background and everything in between the more white it is the closer it is to the foreground and if it's a darker gray more faded it's more towards the background now if we take a look at the prompt here now, there are a couple of things i want to point out here glowing neon blue accents on the armor and then a glowing yellow sword so we're going to go ahead and generate four images just to see what we come up with 
Now in terms of the composition, the images look great. The armor has the neon blue accents, which I like, and we have the glowing sword, but we do have a little bit of the blue bleeding in here. In this example, this one's a little bit better, and I kind of like how the yellow's reflecting off the armor although it's not the look that I want, but in terms of the style composition, looks great. So this is another case where we can use regional guidance and control knit to steer the image to a more specific look than what we see right now. Since I like the style of this image, I'm just gonna use it as a reference. So we're gonna accept this one and we're still gonna use our control knit. So if we click on the eye icon here, it'll hide the control knit, but it's still active. So once again, we're gonna add regional guidance and we're gonna put neon yellow sword and we're gonna come here and just put the area where we want the regional guidance to occur. I'm a little sloppy, just gonna erase a little bit of it here. Then we're gonna add another regional guidance for neon blue accents. Then I'm just gonna choose the areas where I want the accents to show up. I'm gonna move the image because I don't wanna do an image to image. I want a freshly generated image. So let's see how that works out. Great, so out of all of them, this one came out the closest to where I want. Although I don't like the yellow eyes, again, we can fix that, but we don't see the bleed here. There's a little bit of yellow glow from the sword, which is fine. So I'd probably keep this one, but we see with the other ones, this one is actually more what I had in mind, except we don't have any blue accents here. Once again, the regional guidance isn't foolproof. You're still going to get some bleed, especially like in this example here, where there's too much yellow all over the place. The whole point of using regional guidance along with control knit is that you're conditioning the output based on what it is you exactly want. It's a little bit of added work, but it's definitely worth it rather than just relying on a global prompt and generating image after image after image and not getting the result you want. But for the most part, I've gotten almost everything I wanted from the generated prompt. As always folks, let me know what you think in the comments below and tell me what you want to learn next in Invoke AI. I'm going to dive deeper into using the various control nets and how you can utilize them into your workflow. Make sure to hit that like button if you got some value out of this video. Your engagement truly helps push my videos out, especially if you want to support me. Now if you happen to be new to Invoke AI and you're just getting started, make sure to check out these two videos here. Until the next one, I'll see you when I see you.